Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today I have a very long awaited unboxing for you guys. Now I know I say that in every unboxing video that I do, but I really was waiting a long time for these. And this is a package from awesomecollector.com and it finally arrived here in Australia. The reason I'm really, really late to the party with these, and just to be clear, we've got the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1989 and the Gigan 2004 from the movie Godzilla Final Wars Monster Arts figure, the, uh, the re-release of that one. The reason I got these figures so late, because I think they came out like somewhere back in 2021, now it is the start of February 2022, is because there has been issues with the postage from America to Australia, as I've mentioned again in various previous videos. But for some reason, instead of like addressing those issues and um, contacting me, the figures were just kind of like waiting over in the U.S. And I had to uh, contact the guy who runs the awesome collector site, and eventually we got it sorted out. I had to pay a lot more more to finally get them posted, which is a big bummer because. They keep suspending the decently priced uh, postage to Australia for a lot of these things, and it's so annoying. Anyway, if, if that wasn't enough, aside from that, I recently had a pretty rough week. I finally was able to, to get to this, this unboxing today and get to two Monster Arts figures, which is super exciting because, you know, every unboxing where you go to Monster Arts is a special, awesome day. Uh, pun intended, because it's from awesomecollector.com, this uh, particular batch. But, we got two of them. Ah, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. So I, I actually do, in a way, have a version, or have had a version, of both of these figures in my collection before. Because you know that Monster Arts did put out a 1989 Godzilla before in the Kyo 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 Kyoku or whatever the hell, however the hell it's pronounced line which never really went anywhere but they had the uh, the big one here which is really really cool one of my favorite figures actually I've loved that figure and just seeing the the more standard sized one I think the sculpt might look even better from what I've seen in photos I don't know so I'm just finally really excited to get this one because it looks to be like this could be the definitive Monster Arts Heisei Godzilla figure because you know beforehand we had their first release one which I've also got here to compare and the uh, Burning Godzilla mold which is back here which they uh, repainted as the birth version and that is a great figure this is a really solid Heisei Godzilla but this thing from what I've seen at least looks even better and now, the Gigan figure. I was an idiot. I used to own it. The original release of Gigan from Monster Arts. But I sold it. And I didn't even sell it above retail price. I sold it for pretty much what I bought it for, if not at a slight loss. So I was a real idiot back then, but that was when I was getting a lot of external pressure to like be, be all like, Oh, dude, you got a lot of figures. Maybe you got too many of them. Maybe you should sell some from, you know, people around me. And I was like, yeah, it is a lot. Hmm. I thought this figure is so amazing, this Bandai vinyl of the Final Wars Gigan, that, you know what, I probably don't even need the Monster Arts. So I ended up selling it. Big regret ever since then, so I'm so glad I got these two. And they finally made it. Look at that. There we go. All right, let's pull them out. Uh, we'll just see what we got first. I'm going to go for the 89 Godzilla first. Now this is just going to be a quick unboxing video. I'm probably going to do an in-depth review of these two at some point. I just really want to rush through this. Here it is. Yes. Okay. I'm not even going to like look at them properly just yet. I'm just going to put it down. We'll quickly just uh, unwrap our Gigan box. See what that looks like. Oh yeah, I think this was a... Um, a, uh, what's it called? Online exclusive or something like that, they call them. So they come in these sort of shipping containers and they don't have the clear opening. So we got our, our uh, 2004 
Gigan, a great decisive battle version. So that's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> but let's start off with the 89 Godzilla. Now, another thing that I've heard just from some random person on Facebook is that the paintwork on this figure isn't worth the money for the figure. They really said it was really bad, even compared to the NECA figure. So that got me really concerned and kind of confused. I don't really believe them because from pictures that I've seen of this thing, it looks just as good as any other monster arts paintwork wise. And even some of the most sloppier ones, I mean, they're still better than the NECA figure. To be put entirely fairly. <laughs> and just what I'm seeing here in this picture, I'm not seeing any problems. So I don't know what they're smoking. We'll take him out of the box and then we'll actually see in person. Oh. I just love the look of this box, it's just such a classic Monster Arts box. I've missed these, with the slash marks and just the, you know, classic Godzilla on the front. It's just a good looking box. I should actually really show you guys before we kind of dive in. I'm sorry about the glare, it is starting to get nighttime, so I have some pretty bright lights set up. And they're a little glary. But nonetheless, we'll charge on. Smells very plasticky and monster artsy, which is promising to see. And oh, already I see. I actually really love this thing. Just looking at it through the clamshell here. No, nah, that guy was smoking crack. Who was saying um, that the paintwork is bad and that it's not worth the retail price or whatnot. This thing looks awesome. Oh god. Okay. And this is going to be a great companion piece to my uh, Monster Arts Biolante figure, which, uh, yeah, right up there you can see him. I'm, uh, her. You can see her. I'm not going to bring her down for this unboxing, but I definitely will for the full review. Just because, again, I want to power through this. Because I've had a kind of rough week. I just came back from the hospital. I had a visit. I was feeling unwell. Turns out I'm anemic, so they kept me in for a few days. That was not fun, but um, in the meantime these packages arrived and so I was really happy to finally get home and be able to uh, come home to something really fun and really special. Anyhow, got the classic clamshell here with the little bit at the front that the moment you pull it out and the figure out then you're never able to position it the same way again. Got the same kind of plastic sleeves all over him. Very just classic Monster Arts packaging. And already I can tell, I love the sculpt on this thing. Like always, I'm guessing it is a Yuji Sakai sculpt. Because uh, no one else quite does it like Yuji Sakai. Like, the reason I love Monster Arts figures doesn't even have anything to do with the articulation or the paintwork, really. Which some people really bring up as main parts of the figure. But for me, it's the, always a sculpt. Yeah, that is a knockout figure right there, sculpt-wise. Ah. Oh. That's really cool. Nice jaw. Teeth look great. The eyes look great on this thing. Are they actually made of like a... They're glossy. But I don't know if they're made of like a clear plastic or not. No, I think they're just painted up glossy, sort of dark brown, as you'd expect with the 89 design. Great, fantastic, classic design. I do hope they put out a 91. The 89 and the 91 uh, the two from the kind of like main Heisei era that I really want to see done in figures. So you knock this one out of the park by the looks of it, but we really need a 91. And an 84. Let's face it, we really need an 84. Now one thing that was really curious about this figure is the tail, because the thing that kind of sets back, say your um, original, I think it's 94, 93, whatever, original SH Monster Arts Heisei Godzilla. We have um yeah f the first one in the line and the uh, one of the newest ones in the line right next to each other and they both look really great. But one of the things that I don't like about this one and even the fabulous fa birth version or burning Godzilla version is the tail design that they employed back then. It was just really clunky. It didn't... it, it just had these little I don't know how to explain it, these rings that could kind of independently roll around like this along like like a core section and they would never, like they'd always lose how they're lined up and just they were stiff feeling and like they wouldn't hold their pose very well, it was just like they just, they felt like they weren't fought through nearly as well as some of the really new Monster Arts figures that we have in the line where the tails just 
flawlessly hold together. Like for example, the uh, the recent figure that I unboxed, the um, the anime version from Singular Point, Godzilla Ultima. That thing's tail is huge and holds its pose beautifully. I'm expecting that perhaps they employed some of that technology into this tail. But am I am I being disappointed? It does kind of look really similar to that same kind of slightly awkward way they did the tail on the previous Heisei Godzillas, so uh, that's something I'm not super happy about because I found that yeah these bits just tend to spin all the time and, and and get out of place. But it does seem to hold well, but doesn't quite have as much bend as you would kind of hope from a tail like this, but from a, a modern day monster arts. Nonetheless, still looks really cool. Paints nicely done. It's got a nice um, off gray on on his spines, looking really good. And just he's done in a flat charcoal gray all across his body. I think he does. He might have some highlights on him. It's really hard to tell. He's pretty flat colored, but that's accurate to the film. And he's got these nice sort of amber or caramel colored claws. Very nice. And he's got. Slightly brighter claws on his hands. They have slightly less shading, but they they're done really evenly and look really nice as well. And we got that face. That is beautiful. That looks really good. Yeah, really really cool. And the sculpt on this thing. Now, I love the uh, the really big version, and this one just looks great next to it. The sculpts are really really similar, but you can tell that they're both. Uh, individually uh, re-sculpted, but, or are they? Yeah, there's just, you can tell that there's a subtle difference in, in the way that they are sculpted, but there's just very, very subtle differences, but the, just the positioning of some, like, key scales are all, all just there, key folds and things, that's really cool. Yeah, they look great together, the little one and the big one. Of course, this one had the light-up feature. I think I don't have a battery in this one at the moment. But yeah, this one to date was one of my favorite Monster Arts figures, so I'm glad they, they put out an, one to scale with uh, all our other figures, and especially by um, the Biolante. <clears throat> Speaking of um, Biolante, let's compare this one to a few other 89s I have in my collection. Uh, they recently picked up... Godzilla 1989 from YMSF figures. So this is like a, a very similar to like a Bandai vinyl, sort of boutique Bandai vinyl from Japan. And yeah, they look great together as well. Uh, I really love this one from uh, YMSF. I think aside from the, it kind of looks a little awkward, the head from the side. But aside from that, this is a really great representation of the 89. And scales really close to the monster arts. Monster Arts is actually a tiny bit smaller, which I guess is good to make Biollante look even bigger. This isn't the 89, but this is the 91 Bandai Vinyl, brand new figure as well. So, Move Monster Series. That's how they scale. We have the NECA. The NECA 89. Which, um, is a great figure, but has derpy chipmunk face. That's the only real problem with this thing. And it's got a really freaking big tail, this thing as well. It's on. Too big, I'd actually say, which is usually the opposite of my complaints of NECA Godzilla figures. But here you can see it's on a much bigger scale. And uh, yeah, again, that person that was saying that the NECA one is much better than the Monster Arts one paint-wise. Or off their nut or something, I don't know. Because uh, I, I disagree. I think the paintwork on the NECA is very toy-like and a, a bit more sloppy, to be honest. And same applies for the sculpt and just the figure in general. Like, there is a reason this thing is... A high-end collectible and this thing is a much more readily available almost toy like figure but nonetheless <laughs> it's cool we got so many 89s now because back in the day we really didn't have any that uh, we could collect and then we got our birth version which is just a figure I love I think this is just a very very well executed monster arts figure both in quality control and just the the figure design and sculpt itself it's a great great um sculpt of godzilla even though it's technically not really accurate to most heisei godzillas except for the silhouette of the uh the godzilla jr after he absorbed 
Godzilla's energy at the end of the Heisei era. But uh, yeah, this is basically burning Godzilla just without the burning patches. And yeah, really great bulky classic Heisei looking figure. But now we got an even more sort of very unique classic Heisei design in this scale. So that's so cool. And they pair up really nicely together. And may as well bring in the Playmates Burning Godzilla. Uh, so this is their only other Heisei Godzilla in, in the Playmates figure line. So yeah, you can <laughs> the quality control is miles and miles ahead on the on the monster arts obviously. Uh, this one's actually a little bit chunkier as well, a little taller. Um, but they don't scale too badly if you <laughs> it's just funny that the quality differences between these two are so night and day. Um, yeah, but I love them all. Love all these things, regardless. Alright, so I'm just going to put aside our Godzilla 1989 here. I'm going to spend more time messing around with him. I'll get to my final verdict for my full review, see if I can find any negatives and all that stuff. Weigh, weigh all those up and, and eventually I might do a full review of him. Fingers crossed I actually get around to it. Now, let's get to our Gigan figure, and I'm probably just going to rush through that one like no one's business, so I do apologize for kind of speeding through the review for all the, my kind of thoughts on this one, but I just really want to get this one unboxed and kind of have to move on with my day, unfortunately, but I will get to another full review, like I said, where we can actually talk in depth, and there's going to be a lot to talk about with this one, because... Accessory-wise, this one looks like he's uh, packed with stuff from what I've seen, so very exciting. Wow, it's so rare to have two Monster Arts figures in one one day, in one unboxing, in one sitting. It is really just, yeah, too good. Can't beat it. So, already opening up the shipping box, got our guy again. V vibrant blue box, menacing looking uh, Gigan face right there, really cool. Slip this out, yeah, there's our box, look at that, really cranky looking Gigan shooting his, all his stuff at us on the front here and around the back. See we got all these, all these different attachments and crazy things and all the awesome stuff that Gigan comes with, and uh, in particular it comes with all these chains and things to shoot at Godzilla and uh, I'm super super excited for our final wars Godzilla that Monster Arts is putting out later in the year I have that pre-ordered for sure I'm so excited for that one it's one of my favorite Godzilla designs from one of my favorite Godzilla movies so I just had to and I just had to finally get Guy again back in my collection because it was a crime to sell the original one I just ah, I was such an idiot at this point, I'm pretty much just trying to get every uh, Monster Art sculpt on the market that I can. And I think at the moment, out of the ones that are released, uh, not the newer ones, but like the, the older ones, there's a lot of newer ones, I'm just waiting for them to be shipped to me. But the older ones that I'm missing are like Godzilla Jr. and Mecha King Ghidorah and a couple of things like that. But other than that, I've got most of them, so that's been really, really exciting. There we go. Not, not the most seamless unboxing there, but it'll do. And here it is. I have had this figure before, so for the most part, I know what to expect. We've got instructions in here as well. It smells very plasticky, very like brand new Monster Artsy, which is great because that's always. Like, I've now, like, got this mental connection with that plasticky smell that it just means goodness and good things are, are coming. So we've got our instructions. You can install all the different claws and accessories and the different neck parts and the head parts. And, yeah, and now they have even more. So this is the rare, the rare re-release where we have something which came with a bunch of accessories initially but coming with even more for the re-release. And I wonder if paint-wise this is any different than the original. At the moment, and what I'm seeing, looks pretty much the same. We've got a chainsaw hands. Yes! <laughs> I'm probably not going to install the chainsaw hands today, but we definitely will at some point when I do the full review. And oh dear, oh lordy, look at this effect part. That is, yeah, that's impressive looking. That's that weird 
um, laser beam he's got going from his eyes. And that is just an impressive, looks like a flower. Piece of plastic. <laughs> and we got these very long chains here. Very cool. So yeah, they, 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 they did add some really cool stuff to this guy again here. Let's open them up. Yeah. So yeah, typical plastic here. Smells great. Smells like brand new monster arts. Ah, ah. But um, yeah, looks looks just like the guy again that I regretted selling all those years ago. We still got the die cast die cast feet here, the claws, just great. I can feel those are metal. Uh, these ones are not, unfortunately, but that would be a bit over the top if they were. And just that real kind of biomechanical detailing all over them. Great redesign of Gigan, and just such a a cool monster in general. And then the teeth. The teeth on this version of Gigan, I always felt the Monster Arts figure that they were too big, and I don't recall them being painted white in the film either. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think both on the Bandai vinyl that I have of this thing, as well as the X Plus, I actually do have an X Plus of this guy. It's just damaged I, I, bought, I bought a really cheap damaged one which i've been meaning to like repair and customize myself and just actually every other version of this guy again i have in my collection he has silver teeth whereas the monster arts one has these white teeth and they look like kind of like slightly too big dodgy grains of rice in his mouth and his mouth can like barely open and close properly so that's like one of the only negatives i really remember from the original figure and it seems to have carried over to this one <laughs> and look at the tail this just all these spikes here i remember these being really manic and just took forever to kind of like arrange the tail in a pose where it just looks seamless and smooth because these are just so vi vicious looking and crazy yeah <laughs> and he's got the flaps on his back and they open and close that's all great and just yeah great looking figure i'll, I'll bring him in for for you guys Look at that. Final Wars guy again. Done in a dark metallic blue with nice red detailing. It's got that translucent or transparent visor with kind of like the detailing behind it to look really cool. Nice, nice sort of slightly uh, airbrushed silver with sort of um, slightly darker elements to really bring them out on all the mechanical parts. Oh, looking really cool. I'm a huge fan of the Final Wars movie. It's just so over the top and so fun. A uh, huge fan of this Gigan design. So I'm not going to swap his head parts or anything because I'm very late to the party with this figure anyway. And this thing has already been released technically in the past. So you guys kind of know what to expect with this one. It's an older figure that they re-released. Uh, but I will quickly compare him to some of the other Gigan figures I have. I have, um, of course, this guy here, which is the reason I sold my initial one. This is just such a really good-looking Bandai vinyl, to be fair. It's just aesthetically pleasing in so many ways. And, and detail-wise, it is so movie-accurate that, yeah, I, I see why. I was like, mm, when I put these together, this one kind of looks chaotic and a little bit awkward in compared to this nice sleek looking bandai vinyl which is such a strange thing to say when comparing a bandai vinyl to a monster arts but it really kind of is and so I, I did sell that original one and just regretted it ever since but yeah they scale real nicely together they're about the same height and uh since we're in the bandai vinyl world i can bring in my bandai vinyl final wars figure the six inch version i do actually have a much bigger version in a bandai vinyl form of this guy but it doesn't really scale with anything, so I usually have the six inch version just tagging around. And as you can see, he's a, a little bit shorter than Guy Gan, but I think that might be accurate to the film. And hopefully, when we pair the Monster Arts Final Wars Godzilla with the Guy Gan, they'll look great together. And the last one I actually have on hand, Final Wars Guy Gan, is this Marmot figure. And this is the one with the chainsaw hands. And he's a really big figure. Look at that. Uh, cool together as well. Just a great cool design. 
And that is where I'm probably going to leave this video. So guys, I apologize. I didn't really go too in depth with my review or give you guys too many close ups, but that will be coming when I do a full review of these things. But I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you in one of my future videos. But until then, may all your vinyl be rated vinyl. Over and out. Bye.